I am live. I know we're a little early, y'all, but we got a lot of orders to put out since we did that ultra awesome, like, Star Wars sale the other day. I'm still getting you guys set up with a good vantage point, so bear with, bear with. Ugh. Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. So, I am doing this 30 inch round as a Christmas present. I know it. And Bowie is right here letting me know that he is very upset with being ignored. As you, I know it. You're so mistreated. I know. I know. I, I, I agree. Well, let me see what I can do about that. Hold on. He's very upset that he's not getting all of the attention right now. But he will be fine. Okay, now I can see what y'all are saying. So, trying to get all in frame. There we go. So, um, as usual, I'm going to use Art Coat. I know, Bowie is so proud. Roxanne, he gets all of the attention, and he is a fabulous assistant. I just, I'm pretty sure I don't have kids, but I've heard that they always want attention when you're doing something, and Bowie is no, um, no exception. He is sleeping until I start to do a video, and then he wants all of the attention, all of the time. Um, I could probably ship these colors to India. So, the colors I'm going to use today are titanium white, like this, midnight blue, blue moon, Bondi Blue, Liquid Chrome, um, I carry all of those on the website except for the Liquid Chrome, and I'm going to try dusting some Blue Sparkle Bling It um, as well. The color I spray painted my base is um, a color by Loop, and the color is, okay, it says Breast 208. I don't know. I don't know. Um, when you use spray paint, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I mean, you should do that with resin anyways, but particularly with uh, spray paint, don't do it next to like an open flame, etc. Wear a respirator. So I'm just adding a little bit more spray paint down and I'm going to like blow this over the surface. So now there's like pixie particles all over the space. Um, also, you shouldn't ever breathe in micas. It's going to be a do as I say, not as I do moment. Oh, thanks, Roxanne. So now I've got a little bit of shimmer.
definitely looks better in person than it does online. But I just wanted like a starburst of shimmer. Just add a little bit extra depth. I mixed up um, 28 ounces. This is a 30 inch round, which you can find on our website as well. Probably won't need all of these ounces, but you never know. When you're in like a creating mood, you kind of want to not have to stop and mix more resin sometimes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. I'm not going to mix the chrome into the resin. I'm going to just add that on top extra. Hey, Clara. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I haven't used Blue Moon in a while, but it's definitely one of my all-time favorite dry paste. It's something that's very unique about the resin art pigments is that the um, the colors are so rich and the sparkle is just extra. It's not a shimmer. It's or maybe you could call it an extreme shimmer. It's not a glitter. Anyways. Y'all know. Since I am on the phone today filming, um, I can give you true color instantly, which is awesome. I always overload my pigments. Standard rule of thumb is 10%, but with powders, I like to add a little bit more because when you're manipulating everything around, sometimes um, powders tend to go like they'll uh, dilute a little bit. Actually, I think I'm gonna make two of these bond eyes. This tint is really amazing in that you can add just a little bit or a lot and you'll change the depth of the color. somewhat of a glutton so I'm an all-in type of gal but that can end up being wasteful because you know paste can only go so opaque tints can only get so deep in color they'll never be opaque they'll always be transparent gorgeous Thanks, Mary Jane. It was my pleasure to get that box off to you in time. I really appreciate that. How are you doing? So these are both the same, but I added a little bit more into this one so the color is a little bit deeper. Sorry for that little earthquake. Bowie's about to be in full, full on zoomy mode in a second. Yep. So you can get all of these um, products on my website, artistilldeath.com except for the um, the chrome that I'm going to be using closer to the end. This is Midnight Blue. It's very similar to Blue Moon. But it's just a little bit different of a sparkle. Y'all, Bowie is doing circles around the place right now. little toddler. Bondi Blue is 100%. Um, since she kind of ran out of the something turquoise seeds, that's my new favorite. Um, 
Just resin pigment arrived solid. I put it in a warm bath and it's still solid. What can I do? Um, put it a little bit into... Um, like put your uh, heat gun over it just a little bit and see if it liquefies. If it doesn't, just shoot me a text or an email and um, I'll just send you a new one. So this one is titanium white. Sorry, my sister is messaging me. Breakfast at Tiffany's? I didn't know that one did solidify, but um, I've got those in stock, so just let me know if putting it under a heat gun doesn't work, and we'll we'll fix it for you. Thank you, Clara. Well, thank you for showing up, y'all. Good to see you, Debbie. like thank you Andrea um I need to get something oh yeah my torch but I'll grab it in a minute so this dance move I like to call greasing the pan and ultimately it just makes my tinted resin flow over the base more easily much like if you were to grease a pan. And you can do this in a thin layer or a thicker layer. Just keep in mind that um, resin can only really hold itself like around um, an eighth inch on a surface without like breaking that surface tension and flowing off. Um, and that's for like a thicker viscosity resin. Thinner ones, it's a lot less. All right, so I don't like to waste any resin, so I try to get as much out of it as possible. Um, sorry about that noise, I do have my window open. So, um, I gotta grab a torch. Oh, there's That was a nice quick journey. All right. It's amazing how much more sparkly that bling it gets after having resin on top of it. This particular client isn't like full on sparkle fan, but isn't against sparklies. Just a little elegant shimmer, and that's kind of what Bling It is. Just a little bit of elegant shimmer. It, it's not as cold here as it usually is today, so my resin isn't being that particular and that, um, what would be a good comparison? Like cold honey or cold syrup, molasses, if you will. It's not being that bad, but it isn't being um, very giving either. So if you have run into that issue, if you're in like colder climate, you can always make sure your bottles are really tightly, like the caps are really tightly put on and then um, put them in like just higher than a warm hot water bath for like 15 minutes 
and that will thin it out just a little bit. Keep in mind though that the warmer you get your resin, um, the more it can affect your working time. I'm running my fingers through it like this because I'm realizing that the blingets, like for what didn't stick to the spray paint, is moving depending on where my hands are. So it's like flowing with the resin. So I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a design. And that's definitely something I'm going to explore in the future. That looks really neat. Give me a second and I'll move the camera so you can see. I guess I should just move this. kind of see where it's like ripply a little bit but it's not really ripply it just appears to be so so we don't have a rag here so that's fine um it does look a little bit like blue diamond doesn't it All right, so let's start applying some colors. And if I had more time, I would probably let this set up completely and then um, add a layer on top of it, like the next design layer. But I don't have that kind of time, so we're just gonna have to go on with it. The ripples should stay. And actually, the longer you would, if you were to let this set, like another hour and then run your fingers through it, it'd be more likely to stay harder lines, but. We'll see, we'll see. So I don't really have a lot of like, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this piece cause I didn't get that much um, in terms of feedback on what it is that they were looking for. So this is kind of gonna be like, kind of one of the old school type pours where you just put all the resin down all over. It's not gonna be a negative space, which is almost uncomfortable for me since I've done so many negative space pieces lately. Um, Andrea, definitely you'd want to use like less heat so that you can be sure that the ripples kind of stay. My only notes were blue and silver. So trying to build a piece off of that amount of information. Which is kind of nice to not have to like do something specific and just let the colors go where they may and then adjust them as you continue your piece. been a long time because you know when I do my pieces like my way it's hardly ever that it's usually that I have to demo something or help someone out with something which all are perfectly awesome fine things it's just nice to put resin down and 
see what it's gonna do and then take it from there, which granted is a lot of my method anyways. I'm gonna try to do a full coverage piece without making it what I would consider busy. We'll see. We will see. Putting just a little bit of heat down so that it will lend itself to being manipulated a little easier. If I had a heat gun over here, I'd probably use it just because it would um, do this a lot quicker. But they're all in the other room, so work with what you got sometimes. As I'm doing this, I'm just picking out any hairs or uh, foreign creatures that may have hit the resin because the window is open. So a lot of things are probably blowing in at this point in time, which is fine. Um, because I'm gonna top coat it with diamond coat later. Thank you, Don. What kind of ink was the liquid you used? That was um, Bondi Blue, and it is available on our website. Hey, JJ. Um, I have Diamond Coat on our website as well, Jennifer. If someone could link that for me, it'd be super awesome. So this isn't meant to be an ocean, but I'm gonna put a little bit of ocean-y type things in there anyways. So let's tilt this some and see what we're working with. The resin's on a thicker viscosity right now type situation because um, of the weather here. So it's flowing a lot more slowly. If you do use a torch to create any kind of design elements, just be careful not to scorch your resin which can happen fairly easily. Just don't leave any amount of heat on your resin for too long. I'm gonna have to plug in, I'm gonna have to grab a heat gun. I have a blow dryer, it's not gonna work. Plugged in? No. Why would it be
need like a holster for my everything. At this point, I don't think there's a way for me to make this not oceany, but also. Um, Don, if you click down in the description box of any video, there'll be an Amazon link. And thank you, Doris. It's way ahead of me. So I don't think there's any way at this point of not making this ocean-esque. But that's fine too because she's an ocean person. So I'm just heating this area right here because I'm going to manipulate this line. And if I like preheat it, so many cooking terms, if I preheat it some it'll flow more easily. And I won't have to do so much with the torch. And that'll keep the risk lower of me scorching this resin. Which is way bonus. Yeah, that chameleon color does take a while to come in, um, even when it's not Christmas. Top three colors of all time ever, or on my website, or that are blue, or from a certain brand. So I'm gonna let this area rest a little bit. I don't wanna overheat it. Oh, and in the meantime, I'm going to work another area, probably this one right here. Stop falling. Let's maybe work it into this way so it doesn't look like it's all flowing in the same direction. Try to bring it back before it hits that line over there. I'm working on large pieces. Um, I try to recommend people work in smaller areas just because it can get overwhelming. Top three favorite colors. Um, okay, so Judith, it is titanium white from Just Resin. Top three favorite colors. I like dark turquoise, wild jasmine, and basically any white. They're all kind of the same. And I think with those you can build a great piece working those colors together or independent of each other, I think. So it's rested a little bit, but it's still moving some. So probably not ready to be worked quite yet, so I'm just gonna wait a second. The fur babies are doing amazing. Bowie is um, 
I'm sure up to no good. He's in his ball pit and Cujo's taking a nap on the couch. I'll show you guys what they're up to um, towards the end of the feed. That's fun. Oh, bright gold. See, that's another or 007. Oh, yeah, Michelle, you can use a torch. Just be careful with your flame. You don't want to get in a situation where you scorch your resin. It is moving more slowly. I don't know why it mattered to me though since I'm hitting that area with heat again anyways. I went into this piece thinking I wanted large patches of solid color. So that's why I'm keeping some in there. I don't want it to end up too busy. And I wasn't really going for ocean, but if it should end up there, it's fine. This is kind of just a play piece, you know? All right, you got to overload it, Joe. Jennifer, that's really common, and you can always shoot me a message, and I'm happy to help you out. Uh-oh. Next round of Zoomies, Bowie said. Hi, Tammy. Oh goodness, it's getting extra crazy. All right, let's see what we got. I think I wanna move this area. Up into this part a little bit. And that may be too pinpointy. Thank you, Tia. Oh, the dog park is super muddy right now. If you guys haven't checked out Tia Marie's artwork, she is amazing. Highly recommended. when I have that handy dandy blower. I know it, Beans. I know it. Boys be sweet. Oh, I'm so glad it finally made it, Gail. Did you look at it, Gail? How do you like it? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, hey, hey. Boys. That's enough. I don't know where my platypus attachment is, but that's fine. We will work with what we have. You've always wondered how I found my calling in resin. So, um, once upon a time, long, long time ago, I decided I wanted to try resin art and, well, actually it was acrylic. And so I contacted all these awesome artists and asked them for help and tips and direction. You know, just can you tell me one thing you wish you had known when you first started that would have saved you a whole bunch of time and headache? And everybody gave me this proprietary BS answer. So I decided I was going to figure it out myself. And then teach everybody. And so then I became fully dedicated to resin art. Merely to figure it out on my own and kind of stick it to all the people that were being selfish in a way. And I, I'm not saying that everyone should share all of their, like, I figured this out and I'm going to do it and I'm not telling anyone secrets. But, like, I was looking for something so easy as to brace the back of a canvas because it's going to dip or tape the back of your canvases because it's kind of a pain afterwards or read all the directions because when they say mix it thoroughly, they mean it. And if you don't, your piece isn't going to set up. Like I, I didn't want to know all the secrets. I just wanted to know something helpful. And so because people were kind of jerks about it, I decided I was going to be exactly the opposite. And now I work every day to find new techniques and like, um, new ways to incorporate resin or to incorporate other art forms with resin to make something unique. And I want to like make a statement that you don't have to keep secrets to be successful in art. You can share all of the knowledge and still be successful. This is already an intimidating medium, you know? There's no reason to keep a secret that's gonna hinder someone from exploring a great medium. I don't know, that's what I think. Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. Sounds great, Jen. I miss those first few videos y'all made. You guys have come a long way in a short amount of time. Love you guys. Thank you, Tia. We, um, I guess doing it every day kind of forces you to travel a long way in a short amount of time. So now I'm just trying to tie in all of my favorite spots to less desirable areas or areas that needed some work done.
That's all I'm doing right now. On top of getting my hair and resin, but that's common. Where's my blower thing? Y'all will excuse me for one moment. I'm gonna find my blower thing. like we're going to have to continue using our face. I don't know where my blower thing is. Oh well. Definitely areas that need a lot of work. Now that it's in motion, I'm just going to tip the scales a little bit with the torch on certain areas to get them to do what I want them to do. like that and I like this when I did it but now I'm thinking it's a little out of place you know what I mean y'all it's kind of setting back my design as a whole so I may just add some of whatever I have left, which would be some Bondi. Hey Carrie, I think I just sent out your order. Yeah, it's wavy, but it's, it's not what I think I want it to do. So we're just gonna have to adjust. So 
So what I'm going to do is pull it this way. That way I have this and then I'll have one out this way. And I think I'll like it better at that point. Oh, thanks you guys. I still have to find a way to add silver because that was specific request. I'm just going to heat all out through here so that that's the way all of this flows. So I can be specific about how it goes. I'm just tilting all of this part off that I'm not the biggest fan of. And then I'm thinning it in the areas that I want it to curve past so that it gives that same movement that I like in that area up top. Now I'm just going to let it slide back in on itself. I have it just a little off. Table is not exactly level. I'm going to thin in areas where I want some cells to pop up. Because ultimately that's what brings your cells into the piece is a thinning of resin. Not sure why I just pushed that back in that way when it was what I was trying to do was pull it off this way. We'll see. I may have to swipe through it. I must do it. So I may just actually I'll do this. I'm going to mix in. Nope, that one is stuck forever. I'm going to take some of my Bondi Blue, add some Blue Moon to it, if I can get it open because sticky. There we go. I'm going to add some Blue Moon. Whoops, that was way too much. Try to use a stick when you can. I'm just gonna add some more of that to kind of balance that out. I didn't have any more clear resin left, so I just overloaded some Blue Moon into some of my, what was that? Bondi. That should tie in. This. Again, this is resin, so all of that is in theory.
we are getting somewhere. Let me get some swiping paper. don't swipe a piece unless I have stone coat but because it's hard for me to get my face where it needs to be I'm gonna utilize the swiping tricks just to tie in certain areas am I going live on Christmas I'll do my best Another thing that I like about using swipe paper is that when you use it with um, powders, it kind of like rearranges how they're laying and you can like create designs just in the powder. about that is when you have a design it has to start from somewhere so now you can see kind of the start area so I'm gonna have to thin that out and get it moving just a little bit to have it make sense with where it is this right here. I'm going to use a heat gun so I have the reach. Since that's kind of the center of the piece, by kind of I mean exactly the center, I want it to kind of make sense a little bit. So I was at a bowie hair or a moon hair. So certain areas of this look kind of busy and certain areas look more calm. I don't know if I like it looking like there's a hole right here. just to close the gap, as it were. I cracked myself up. trying to tell myself that I'll like it more once I have the silver on it. It's not a bad looking piece, it's just a lot going on. Makes me feel better when waves are involved.
Thank you, Jen. So I'm gonna let all of this white tilt to the edge real, real quick. And then I'm gonna tilt it back on, but the white will adhere kind of, well, adhere. It'll stick to the edge a little bit. It'll hold on. So when I tilt it back forward, it'll switch all of the cells. so crazy how when you do tilts like that and you use a powder, it kind of pushes the, um, the mica particles so that they make their own like glowing design. I'll show you guys in just a second. Yes, I'm going to do Montana Chrome. Luckily, this resin gives me a forever working time, so I don't have to stress about am I going to have enough to finish the piece in terms of like it's setting up on me, which I've had happen with other brands before. It's very stressful. Oh, you silly, what are you doing? So you can use alcohol inks to tint resin, just be forewarned that alcohol inks are not light fast in resin. So odds are pretty high that your colors will fade over time. I'm just gonna give you an updated look where we're at on this piece, if I can get the phone down. So this is what I was talking about with the particles of mica shifting. So they kind of pushed forward when I was doing that last tilt. So you can see all these little bloop, bloop. That's where the resin was getting ahead of me. Hi, Beansy. You sure are being good now. You sure are being good now. You sure are being good now. What did you get into? Why is your coat all like this? 
All right. Now, uh, okay. I'm gonna do the silver. For the silver, I'm going to be using um, Chrome by Montana. Okay, so this is the Molotow Liquid Chrome. It is now all pixie covered because um, I touched it. And also, I was using bling at the beginning of this video. So you have to shake it up really well. I'm just going to put some into this, this cup. And see it looks like a melted mirror and I'm gonna use one of these like shish kebab skewers to place it where I want it ideally we'll see if it works okay It's staying on the stick pretty well, which is awesome. I'm going to use this technique to kind of break up any areas that are too solid. It might melt the cup. We'll see. That looks really fun. And I'm just going to turn it on the side. so that it's not quite as uniform. The stuff dries super quick once it's the top of the resin, so. So it looks very like, boop, boop, boop. so I need something to kind of counteract that like uniformity right there. So I think I'm just gonna
angle one like that. Also, I picked up a hair on my way doing that one. Thank you, Andrea. Typically on my regular pieces, I wouldn't do anything crossways and then long ways. I feel like that kind of interrupts the flow of the eye across the piece. But this isn't supposed to be anything and Anytime someone commissions me to do something that I kind of have a little bit more free reign with, it's when I try to do some experimentation. I wonder what would happen. Ugh. Those are like textbook possible last words. I put some of a color on top of this. That's different. I like it. I'm going to leave it. I'll give you guys a close up of that in a minute. So usually I will pour the gold out and let what I feel like is the reason why the gold kind of grows a little bit. I'll let that soak into some paper. And I think this has it in it too a little bit. So maybe we'll just pour some out. And I'll let whatever wants to soak into this paper. doesn't look like a whole lot, but we'll see in a second how if it grows still. This looks like, um, I'm not sure what, but I like it. I was toying with the idea of adding some silver leaf to this piece too, and I still might. We'll see. I'll make it do. That's one of my favorite things to say, if you guys don't know. Make it do. Because it's kind of like all encompassing. Just make it do what you want it to do. All right. I think layer one is done with this piece. 
I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a close-up show. Whoop. Y'all, Jeff would have been so mad if I dropped this into resin. So this is the chrome. It doesn't even want to register. What are you doing? You have the zoomies? Do the zoomies? Okay. Yeah, it's not going to register the chrome. I'll have to do it in another video. Oh, there's, you can see like our ATD logo reflecting back. Probably my favorite part of the piece over here. But you know, sometimes you can do a piece and it may not be your favorite, and then you take a break and come back and check it out, and then you realize that you actually do like it, or it settles a bit, and then you realize you like it after it kind of just does what it's going to do. So that's the chrome under the Bondi blue. It looks kind of like a shadow of the chrome. Oh, so here's what happened when you get around to the other side. Here's what happens when I put that Bondi over the chrome. It kind of like, mm, what's the word? I almost said star blasted. That's not right. It kind of just exploded what it was and just pushed it aside. And I think it's a neat look. So this is where I'm gonna leave layer one, part one of this commish that I'm gonna have to finish manana. But yeah. I'm digging it so far. I just just need to calm it down a bit, I think. But I'll save that for layer two. Anyways, you guys, be kind to one another. You never know what someone's going through, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Moose says bye.